All right, how's it going everybody? This is Peter from the Bozeman Angler. I'm gonna show you um, one of my favorite new little streamers I've been messing around with, the Complex Dubbing Twist Zonker. Um, it utilizes, I'll tighten this guy up. It's, uh, it's really kind of a pattern combined of a few different techniques that I've stolen from a few different other fly tires. Um, the first being the guys over at Fly Fish Food. I would highly recommend a visit over to them. And um, for the for the dubbing twist, and then the the rest of the fly is basically based off of a, a saltwater bonefish pattern that works great on bonefish. And I decided to try it out on trout. And apparently, they like it too in trout colors. So let's go ahead and tie on some eyes. Yeah. A little bit behind um, the eye of your hook, give it a couple of little figure eights and then start building up a few wraps underneath it, give it a few more wraps and then to make this guy nice and durable I like to throw a little coat of Zappa Gap on the top and the bottom here and I'll put a few more thread wraps over that. I'm really building up quite a head on it there. And then from that point, I'm pretty happy with it. I'll just go ahead and bring my thread all the way down, almost to the end of the shank there. I want to leave a little bit of space because what I'm going to do here is poke um, a brown rabbit zonker strip through. So let's see, if you haven't done so already, just go ahead and crimp that barb down. Make it easier to, to fit the zonker strip over and we want that part as our tail. So let's see, I'm gonna poke it through right about there because that's about how far I want it out. So just get it fixed right in the middle. Poke it through. And then take the hook out of your vise and slide it around the rest of it. Put it back in the vise. Let's see. Now to make that dubbing twist, I'm going to use a little bit of Palmer chenille and cactus chenille um, and let's go ahead and throw some schlopping in there too I'll do brown on brown on root beer give it a nice sculpting color and I like these I'm not going very far with it so like these short little fat schlopping ones will be perfect go ahead and take that and Strip off some of that fluff and stroke those feathers down so you get a nice little point. And then I usually line up my polymer chenille and my holographic wrap to be about the same length. And if you want to keep it clean, you can strip off that last little bit of the holographic wrap. So what I do with these guys. Make sure I had my little paper clip before I started this whole deal. But if you just pinch all three of these guys down at your tie-in point, tie them all in together. Let that rabbit fur to get it out of the way. And just go ahead and bring your thread all the way back up to, oh, right about there. And then if I pull these guys down, one over the top of each other, something like that. Grab your miniature little alligator clip 
and then our nice standard debit tool, hook that guy in like that, so that this way I can just spin this guy. I'll try and do it upside down so you get a better view of it. Basically, I'm just spinning that around so I can tie all three of these materials in at once. That should be fine. If you got some of those fluffy ones in there, that's okay. Get rid of your dubbing spinner and just start wrapping these guys forward. As we get up to our thread, go ahead and tie it off. Pull a bunch of those feathers back so I don't lose or trap down too many of them. But two wraps should secure it. Trim off the rest of this. We wet it and kind of pull everything back and sort of clean it up a little bit. And then here what I like to do is, so it's really nice and um, spiky all the way around. Go ahead and wet your fingers and Pull those guys back so you've made a little bit of room for your rabbit fur to stick down and then try and separate that guy so you've got a nice little tie-in point just on the hide. Give that two wraps, tie it in, go ahead and trim off. Your excess. And at that point you can kind of configure it to the exact point that you want. Maybe throw in another wrap to trap it down, but try and keep your wraps to a minimum here because you don't want to um, crowd that part there. And then I'm going to do a dubbing loop here to build up a little bit of a bulk on a head. Um, so just your standard dubbing loop you know, maybe like five or six inches of thread, come down with it and then wrap around to build up your loop and go ahead and bring your thread just a little bit in front of the eyes there. Um, and my old school thing of Wonder Wax that I've had since like 94. What I like to do is wax both sides of it to make it nice and tacky. Um, and then I'm going to put my dubbing twist in it just so it's sitting there so it doesn't spin up on me. And then if I take a big chunk of the rest of my rabbit fur and try and hold it by the tips and snip off a clump and start building my head with that. So if I stick it in up at the top and then kind of slide it down, I can keep it fairly tight. And to give it a little bit more bulk, I'll leave that there and add in a little bit more bunny hair. This way we're building up bulk. It's going to move a little bit on us. Help it sink and make it look nice and fishy. So this one will start right below that. And slide it down. So it starts in as a clump and then you just progressively slide it down and if you have enough wax on it, it should keep it in place and then you know, kind of get it to that point where your thread is right in the middle and just start twisting it. And definitely as you twist, if you want to stroke some of those fibers so they, so let's see, we get a nice brush on it there. Doesn't have to be too particular because we can fluff this out later, but I do like it nice and spiky to begin with, so. Make it nice and tight there, and just start wrapping that guy around. So I build up a little collar behind my eyes there, and then I'm going to figure eight around them. And then I should have just enough left to put a, one or two wraps in front of those eyes. Since you spend all that time putting the bunny fur in there. I like to try and use all of it. That's about as far as I can get. Tie that off. Two wraps. 
Let's see the way. And then to finish this guy off, I'm just going to wrap back a little bit. Maybe clear it off so I can see those eyes, those nice, cool, beady red eyes looking at you. And let's see. Kind of build up a nice little taper on that head so it looks cool and swims nicely. Um, and then first, before I do anything, I'm going to throw in a little half hitch, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And then let's uh, throw on some UV thin finish, and I'll just kind of coat that whole spot all the way around. Just to add a little bit of extra weight to it for uh, durability. Seal it in with my UV light. And can probably be finished with it there, but just to trap those last few fibers that are kind of floating around, I'll put a few more wraps around it. Kind of give it that nice, somewhat tapered look. One and a half hitch. You could throw in a whip finish as you if you wanted, but I think we're pretty locked down and I don't want to screw up that decent looking taper that I have there. So let's just trim that. And just for show purposes. Clear that eye so it looks nice and sweet. So basically the cool thing about this is like, you know, that'd be a killer redfish or bonefish fly. Um, but it works great for trout too, especially on like your shallower um, tailwater things, because it's gonna ride hook up but it's still got you know all that nice movement of your rabbit hair and your zonker and a little bit of flash underneath everything. So um, kind of got the best of both worlds in a lot of patterns there. So there you go.